Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to another Caddy Cube Tuesdays. Today I'm here with John Uzusan, which is probably the wrong way to say it, isn't it? No, it's, a, it's actually a great pronunciation. Go on. Absolutely much worse. <laughs> Hello, quick hello, and we get to go. Welcome to the show, John Ozuzi. There, I assassinated it. Yeah, that's something that I never heard before. It was neat. <laughs> I, I, I kind of thought, well, I'm going to get it even better, and I just did it worse. But lovely, lovely to meet you. We've had a conversation about this before, all about how to create content that converts. Now, I found our conversation hugely, hugely interesting, and I've already implemented some of the tips you've given me. Uh, so we're going to go through those and then some more, and we'll look at a few examples, and you're going to really nail it for me where I'm going right, where I'm going wrong. Uh, before we get going on that really quickly, uh, the brand set, which is what I always look at, uh, I looked up uh, Datapad. Yep. Um, yep, and yep. Datapad Incorporated comes up, but Datapad is something from Star Wars that I didn't know. I didn't know it as well. Oh, really? Really? You didn't know? No, I, I didn't know. I didn't know it until, uh, I also did the same person. I, I searched Datapad, um, and then I had no idea that it was something related to Star Wars before that. And I'm also a huge fan of Star Wars. So I was surprised that I had no idea. Oh, right. Okay. And, and that's one of the problems with kind of ambiguous names or names that mean multiple things is as a brand, you then need to dominate and you need to overcome that ambiguity and confusion, both in Google's mind and in your audience's mind. But then we found this uh, lovely little olive panel, uh, which is delightful. Uh, it can be claimed, but you would need to fill in a very long form to do it. I would advise you to get Google to recognize the entity home, in which case you can then claim it using Search Console. And if anybody else is interested in this incredibly geeky stuff about all these panels and brand steps, join the Caddy Cube Knowledge Panel and Brand Step Support Group down there at the bottom. But then I got overexcited and I found your knowledge panel. And it's tiny and empty. Yeah. And we see a lot of these around Google Create an awful lot of knowledge panels that are empty or just have a photo or just have the name. And what you now have is your KGM ID you can see on screen there, and you can start building a healthier, bigger knowledge panel like the one you have for Datapad Incorporated, starting from this tiny, tiny, tiny knowledge panel scrapped. Are you going to do that? Oh, uh, that's very interesting. I'll, I'll be interested to do that, actually. Yeah, it's really good fun. We yeah, do that yeah. all day long at CaliQ. So um, I, if, if you can help me with content the Colbert, I can help you with the knowledge panel. Oh, that's a deal. That's a good deal for me. I would definitely be in for that. It's a great deal, isn't it? And quickly, before yes. we get going, uh, produce in partnership today with WordLift, as always, an amazing partner for us, the artificial intelligence. You need to grow your traffic. WordLift are amazing. It's an amazing tool. And I went to an ad to the CaliCube Knowledge Panel course, uh, where you learn everything you need to know about triggering, managing knowledge panels. You can get an amazing knowledge panel from a tiny sprout like that in three to four months. Uh, and then you can stabilize. It takes about a year. So your, your timeline for knowledge panel is an iteration of three months with a 12 months timeline to get it stable. Sound fun? Yep. Right. Now on, on to the topic for today, which is uh, content that converts. Now we had a conversation. I was saying we're writing huge numbers of FAQs. One way to absolutely know your topical authority in Google's mind is to write FAQs, answer those common questions of your, your niche topic. Uh, Corey Gubov talks about going in depth. So answering, answering a lot of cool questions. What I was doing was just answering the questions and then hoping that the person would recognize that we're GDI geniuses rather, uh, and decide to buy a product. And you're saying that simply doesn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I remember saying that. So what, what should I be doing if I'm writing an FAQ, for example? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll talk, talk about it from my perspective. Um, I, I completely agree that to go, to go to pickle authority, like you got to cover everything that someone can ask about, um, in, in your topic, but in B2B SaaS, like I usually don't write FAQs, but, uh, what I usually do is like, I'll have a separate page for everything, but to convert, right? So if I'm writing about the problem, let's say that. You know, we have war, our, our South companies helping people to reduce churn, just, hmm. just in the sake of an example. So if I'm writing about how to reduce churn, right, the thing I need to be doing is 
I shouldn't look at the other search results and copy and paste them and give generalized advice if my product is solving that problem. Or I shouldn't mm -hmm. feel shy about going out there and shouting, hey, like you can solve this problem with my product. Um, so you should, when you have an article like that, when you give those five to six steps to solve the problem, you should show how people can do it with your product, right? You start with a small disclaimer and say, hey, like we developed this amazing tool that is going to help you to reduce churn. Unlike the other you know, articles you can find out there, we're going to give you a different way of solving the problem. So when you say that, you're giving a disclaimer. You're building a record with, with your audience because people can smell the SEO, the content that is only written for SEO. So they're going to, oh, okay, well, this one is different than the other one. So let's keep going. So you keep the reader interested. And then within, within those steps, you show people how they can solve the product, uh, solve the problem with your product, right? You show the screenshots, GIFs, videos, interactive demos, anything they, that, that can help them to see that your product is the ultimate solution for their problem. That's how I go about it. You, you don't give them the option to solve it themselves without your product. Um, I do it, but that's a different type of article. I can talk about it right now or I can save it for later as well. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, it, it's an article that says this problem, I'm, I'm going to address this problem and I will <laughs> show you in this article how our tool helps you solve this problem. What, what would an example of a question that somebody would ask that you would be answering okay. your, okay. your platform? Okay, so again, let's take the example of a SaaS company and our company is helping people to reduce churn, right? So maybe I'm a user who has no idea that there's a solution like this out there. I go to Google and then I search something like how to reduce a churn, how to reduce do, a churn. Do people actually ask about that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, okay. I mean, I don't know about the reduced churn, but in my case, like I don't guess the questions. I go and, I go and ask my best customers, hey, like, how would you search this problem? How would you search this problem? Sometimes I ask them to share their screen and walk you through the process as well. I see like how they search it. And then I come up with the topic ideas. Hmm. Okay. So ask, ask your, your, your clients rather than asking Google, ask your best clients and say, how would you research this? And then we come up with a list of problems that they're identifying and we know how they're looking at it. At which point, I mean, from my perspective, it's like, I'm a user, I come to this and I I think on the internet, we all expect free solutions to everything. Mm -hmm. So are you not putting yourself in a position where you're kind of hard selling very quickly to somebody who doesn't want it? No, I don't think so. So I, um, I use scoring, right? One to three. So if the one to three is the business relevancy score, Ahrefs is using the same thing as well. So oh. one is the lowest business relevancy, three is the highest. And the three is usually, if there is a problem out there and my tool is an ultimate solution for this. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with just like explaining people how mm -hmm. they can solve it with, with my tool. Because the thing is, this person might be looking for a tool like mine, but maybe they don't know there's a solution out there. So by yeah. telling them, giving them a disclaimer, hey, look, I am the founder, or like we build this tool. So we're going to give you a different type of advice than what you can find out there. Yeah. Okay. Then I think it's totally fine. Right. Yeah. So being up from absolutely mm -hmm. totally fine. Um, you mentioned images, GIFs, and videos. Yes. You, you told me about that uh, earlier on. You said, have an image right at the top, basically at a glance shows exactly what they're going to find in the article. Can you describe mm -hmm. that? Because it's a great idea, but it's yes. really difficult to do. Yes. So um, what I like to do is once I write a content, I like to focus on the information gain score. How do I put something extra there that is going to differentiate me from the other content, right? This could be an extra you know, covering another subtopic, this could be a media cluster or something else. An image is one of my favorite, especially when you're writing about how to contact, right? So what I usually do is, let's say that again, we go back to this, how to reduce churn. It's not like my, it's not my company, by the way. I just, I'm just using it as an example. It's just easy to remember. Um, let's say that we have this article, how to reduce churn in five steps, right? So in that case, what I do is I create a custom image, kind of like an infographic, and then um, tell those five steps to the people so that they see the flow. What did they need? What they should be doing from an image? Even if they don't read it, they understand the flow that they need to go through. That's that's what I'm um, trying to do. But it's very hard to explain everything within that image. So I wouldn't try to explain everything within that. Image. Just like an overview of the steps that they need to take to reach the the desired outcome. 
Right. Okay. Now, the, the, the idea of an image, I mean, I, 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 I'm looking at one of our um, articles. We do a lot of FAQs and a lot of them are about um, how to, to get a knowledge panel. Mm-hmm. And here, for example, I'm sketching my screen for the people who are just listening to the audio version. I'm showing my screen showing an article about Google Knowledge Panel for a person how to get, manage, and optimize. Now, that's our, the heart of our business. We start off with this image. That really doesn't say anything, does it? Nope, not for, not for a minute. It's just pretty. Yeah, it just looks good. Yeah. Does help me understand what's in the, in, the, in the article. Then we've got the table of contents, which helps me figure out really quickly which files I might be interested in. Uh, you mentioned here, we, we've, we've got important. What's Google is the fact and is confident in those facts. You'll get a knowledge panel. You said what, the pro tip? Uh, yes, pro tip. So what I usually do is in an article like this, so if you're looking for a place to, place to put this pro tip, I usually do control F. And, and let's say that in this case, you're helping people to solve, uh, create the knowledge panel, right? And then I yeah. control F my keyword, like how to create the knowledge panel or knowledge panel. And anytime that you're, you're mentioning how you're creating, how you can create a knowledge panel, I would put the pro tip right under that because you're talking about the knowledge panel and then you can start with the pro tip. Hey, by the way, we're talking about the knowledge graph and here's how you can do it with my, with my right. services or product. Okay. Um, we haven't done that. Uh, what we, what we do have is a, a screenshot of an example of exactly what we're talking about. And as you go down, we then have this enormous screenshot, which shows Bill Gates's um, entity home. Mm-hmm. To show I mean, what an entity home could look like. Sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I think the first tip regarding the images that I would get is the first, the pretty looking image that you showed me in the beginning, right? So, and, and you also said it as well, like this, this is not telling you much, right? And yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's not. But when we started the show, you showed me my, uh, you know, own knowledge panel, right? And then I was like, aha, okay, knowledge panel is this. So I would put a picture of what knowledge panel here, maybe not like an illustration like this, but an exact one. And then like mm-hmm. highlight the knowledge panel in the search and say this knowledge panel, that, like this is how it looks. Give the real thing instead of the illustration. Because Which then I would understand. Here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would maybe put it a little bit higher so that people mm-hmm. understand, okay, now I get it. Now I get what this thing is about. Then I might get excited. If I don't understand what is it, then I'm not going to be excited for it. Right. Okay. And the, here we have a three-step process, which is identify the entity home to the person, then, oh, where is it? Corroborate and confirm about the person, then create an infin- infinite self-confirming loop of corroboration with the person. Is that something we could put in an image here or would you put it in an image down here somewhere? Um, can you scroll down a bit? Let me, maybe the first one, the first one. Okay. I, we have a three-step <laughs> process and obviously yeah. the three-step process in an illustration would require some words. Yes. Yes. So I would put it right under this header, three simple steps to get knowledge panel for a person on Google or Ring. Like, right. I would say, here is how the flow will look like. And then I would put the image right under it so that people can understand the things that they need to be doing before creating a knowledge panel. Um, and the, another thing that I've noticed here, if, if you can scroll down a bit, are you telling people, are you showing people how, how this service could be done through Pelicub? Yeah, I, we actually added that at, at one point. Um, oh no, we don't. But we should, okay, yeah. we, we have a free download, which is uh, a more intricate explanation with 17 steps. So we're trying to get people to download the, the do it yourself. So we're, we're pushing the idea of you can do it yourself. And mm-hmm. what we haven't done is what you were talking about is showing the pitfalls and problems that people will face. Yes. In this case. So, um, it could be different for SaaS, but if this was my product, what I would do is you're giving all those three steps, right? Um, yeah. What I would do is I would like base those three steps on, on how I would do it with my product. Like how, how would you do it? If I ask you right now, Hey Jason, like how we could do this, can you share your screen and show me how you could do it? Oh, imagine that I ask you this question. Can you share your screen and walk me through the process? Right. And this, these are the steps that should be there and you should put videos or screenshots. Like I shouldn't be able to see what your product can do for me. I don't see it. If you're not, if you're not showing your product within the article, I'll think that you're hiding something. I'll think that you don't, you don't trust your product enough to show me oh so that you're hiding it. 
you're you're hiding it. You're you're dating it. Because if it was a great product, you would show me there. And then you would impress me. You would give me the aha moment before you get my email. That's that's how I think. Right. Because I, I was kind of thinking, well, I won't be pushy. So I'll be nice and I'll let them do it for free. And one day maybe they'll figure out that it's easier with my that's I mean or my done to you service. Even, even if they can do it for free, I would show them a way, like how you can do it. Like show me in this article how I can do it for free. Like with the screenshots, with the videos, every step, like explain me every step, how I could do this. Because right. then you're going to educate your readers. You're going to help them. And they're going to be like, oh, like, well, this company is giving me like free stuff. Good. Like I'll trust hmm. their content. I'll, I'll trust them. Um, I think that's where the difference is. Right. And in fact, I can, I can show them the three-step process. I can screen share. And then I said, sorry, I can show them the three-step process, explain that to them, and then say, but it actually takes quite a lot of work and it can take quite a lot of time and you can get it very wrong. And if you get it wrong, you're going to set yourself back several years, which is hugely problematic. And with the Cutty Cube done for your service, we'll do it for you. We'll make sure it's done properly. Yeah, it takes it. exactly. So like after you give them the three steps, you can say, hey, here are the three steps. If you want to do it by yourself, I'm showing it to you, do it by yourself. And then you can talk about what are the drawbacks of doing it by yourself, right? You can mess stuff. I don't know the drawbacks of doing it yourself. You know it better, but like I would put it there, make people understand it. Okay, well, if I go and do this uh, by myself, what are the drawbacks? Is it going to take, I don't know, 55 hours? I can mess some, I, I could spend 60 hours on it, but it will not yield anything. And then you can say, well, here's an easier way of doing it, right? Um, and here's how my, how I can work for you, how my service can work for you. Right. So that, that's the way I would do it. Right. Okay. Brilliant. And talking of the, the pitfalls and, um, problems is now I'm showing my screen again for the people who are listening just to the audio knowledge panel sprouts on Google, what you need to know, what is a knowledge panel sprout. And we showed at the beginning, your knowledge panel sprout, which is really tiny, but the knowledge panel sprout is a huge opportunity because you've got a, a foothold in Google's brain. So here I've suddenly started out to give image, image, image. We haven't done it yet, but I know I need to add more images. I say, why it's useful, how you could find one. Um, so how can I create one? And then I've got pitfalls and drawbacks. Knowledge nice. models sprouts were unstable. They can disappear easily. Adding accurate information is tricky. And if you lose the spout, spout it's back to square minus one year. Yes. And then like in it. there somewhere I should put we can do it for you. So after that, I would do it. Like after you give the pitfalls yeah. a drawbacks, then I would say, um, I don't know, maybe something like create the knowledge panel without the headache, right? Okay. Uh, so, something like that. And another tip that I would give to you is like, I like, you know, I like, um, you know, making my content look, look good and, and fun as well. So when you're talking about pitfalls, maybe like you would want to put some GIF or something else that, uh, represents the emotion when someone feels like, oh, like, uh, you know, it, it can yield nothing if you spend 50 hours, like entertain the people as well. So you have the pitfalls, right? You can, you can put some gifts under those pitfalls as well to make it look better, like play on the emotions as well. Right. Um, what kind of gifts are you talking about? The really silly ones with cartoons or something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah, just like a normal gift, the, the silly ones, um, I, I use them quite a lot and, and I think that it helps you to differentiate. It gives some personality to your content as well. Uh, like emojis too. I use quite a lot of emojis in my content too. Well, like, okay. And where do you get the GIFs from or the GIFs from? Um, usually my writers are getting it, but there's this, I don't know how to write it. Giffy, GIF, G I. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not Giffy. sure how to spell it. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. So. Okay, not brilliant. And and at which point, with that, the illustration that we saw earlier on, you were saying, well, that's actually not very informative, but we could actually make something out of that and use the illustrations as a, as a gift. <laughs> you, can, actually. you can use that too, but it's, I mean, it's easier to go and get a gift because like you're just going to take it from a source versus you yeah. created something by yourself. I would prefer that if you have an in-house team that can create illustrations, that's something funny. That would be amazing, actually. Right. Yeah. Well, from my perspective, that's about the branding that we're trying to do is to mm -hmm. not use the standard stuff and to stand out. And this illustration style is part of that. I think like, the more I talk to different people, I think the illustration style does make us di differentiate, does make us stand out. But if we overuse it, it doesn't make sense to anybody. 
Yeah, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause a fatigue because then people will get used to it as well. So that's why like maybe sometimes it's better to put GIF and mix that with the illustrations as well so that you have some variety there. Okay, brilliant. I mean, all of this is great advice. And um, <laughs> Jean Marie, who does these articles, and Elisa, who does some case studies, um, I think we're going to get lots of information for that. So what, what's the next step in terms of content that covers? I mean, you've answered my questions, which has helped me hugely. Uh, mm -hmm. We're already on a, a better place now than we were before. Um, but in terms of the rest of the site, we're not talking about FAQs. You've done the customer journey with their problems. What other types of content can you create that will convert? Yeah, of course. So um, we can B2B. talk about B2B B2B SaaS for, for B2B SaaS platform. <laughs> um, we can talk about the what I call desired outcome content. So right. um, desired outcome content is, well, first of all, you need to do your customer research and understand why people use your product. Like what is the, how their life is going to be better, right? So once you understand that, then you can start writing content. And again, I'm going to go back to the reducing the churn thing, right? So, um, so in, in this case, right? So the desired outcome for a customer is to reduce churn, right? So if you write a content on how to reduce churn and increase the bottom line or something like that, then you're playing on my desired outcome. So this type of content is great, especially in your, if you're not in the mature niche where people can go to Google and search for something like, best project management tool or best, best CRM software or mm. competitor alternative, right? Because if someone is searching for something like that and there is a decent search volume, you're probably in a mature industry. But let's say that you have no competitor, right? Um, mm. In that case, focusing on the desired outcome and then validating the keyword through any keyword, uh, yeah, keyword research tool right. and then writing content on it is the best way to target those people who could be your potential customers. Um, that's uh, one type of content that I use quite a lot, especially in the new niches. Right. And I mean, from, from our perspective, not talking about customer churn, but talking about knowledge panels or brand search, in fact, it would be tighten up the bottom of the funnel and increase income. Um, I, I would say, so. I would ask you like, what would happen if I have a knowledge panel? How is it going to help me? Is it going to make me look more, let's say that, you know, if I was an agency owner, how is it going to help me? Right. Is it going to make me more credible? Yes. Okay. So if that's the case, then I would say for this persona, the desired outcome is to be more credible. Right. Sure. Then I would, then, then I would try to write a content like how to be more credible as an agency owner. Okay. I, I would try to validate if there's a search volume for it first. Even if there's no search volumes or zero search, volume, I still go after keywords like this because it has a high business relevancy. Mm -hmm. And then I would go and write how to, how to, you know, have more credibility as an agency owner. And then instead of giving generalized tips, I can say, well, hey, the best way, the best way of gaining more credibility is through having a knowledge panel. Here's how, we, here's how, we, here's how we can do it. What is it? And here's how we can do it for you. Like I would approach it like that. Or, right. or. Oh, in fact, sorry. Hey. Rather than use the word credibility, I, I would use uh, authority and trustworthiness. And that would then play into EEAT. So yeah. how to build authority and trustworthiness for Google or with Google uh, exactly. and your audience. That, that's wonderful. And if yeah. we could write pretty much the same article, but just angle it totally differently and have the two articles living side by side, yeah. one of I, which I, is yeah. aiming for the knowledge panel, one of which is aiming for the, the outcome of that knowledge panel, which is authority and trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if you want to do this process, the thing you need to do is just take the persona, understand the desired outcome, and then come up with the topic idea and then mm -hmm. try to use the keyword research tool and see if there's a volume or there, uh, because I know that some people want to do this, but like, I don't do it. I don't care if there's no search volume at all. Uh, I'll still write it, but some of you out there who loves doing that, um, that's, that's totally fine. But I, I would do this for every persona and every desired outcome. And you can use this on social as well, right? Cause it's a great, it's a great content for social too, not just for an SEO. When you go out there and then put a content uh, to the LinkedIn and say like, here's how we can be more authority as, as an agency owner, people will be like, oh, very interesting. That's, that's for right. me. Let me, let me see how we can do that. And, and you would go as far as to say, uh, authority and trustworthy for an agency owner, for a real estate agent, for a lawyer, for a doctor, yeah. and you would write each of those articles. Yes. So I, I like verticalizing my content because. Verticalizing, is that a word? I think so. Yeah, it is now. I, I think so. <laughs> I, I like, like, 
I don't believe that you're in, in a B2B SaaS, your tool cannot be the best for everyone, right? So I like, I like the niche down. So the best, best tool for, I don't know, project managers, the best tool for small business owners, or, or the same thing for the use case as well, right? Gaining credibility for small business owners, gaining credibility for agency, because I, one content cannot be for, you know, all, all readers. I need to be no. able to use a different tone. I need to be able to use a different writing style for each one of them. That's why I like to verticalize it. So you can do it for an agency owner. Maybe you have some other person you can do that too. Um, I love doing Brilliant. that. I always do it. And you change style of writing to address the persona. It's not your style of writing that you adapt the words so that it fits in with what they're, the vocabulary they would use. No. So when I say this style, so let's say that we have the agency owner and we have the, can you name another persona? Just for the sake of naming it. A uh, lawyer. Okay. Lawyer. Right. So, or law firm. um, no. okay. Law firm. So the reason why someone is looking to build more credibility is, as a as, as a loafer or as a lawyer could be different than an agency owner. So I need to talk about the different benefits and bit different desired outcomes within the same. It's going to be same structure, right. but you're going to tweak some words, right? Right. That's what I mean. Okay. Right. Okay. Sorry. I thought you were being a comedian and completely changing your personality. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> Which would have been brilliant. A absolutely wonderful. We'd, we've got four minutes left. I wanted to, as always, come come in with the the last question, which is to do with branded search, because you are listening to branded search. I've been on with Jason Bernard and John Ozisa. Question one: How can content that converts help with branded search? Or question two: How does branded search tie in with content that converts? Uh, I was interested in the home page. On a brand search, when somebody searches a brand name, you're going to rank number one. They click on it. What should you do on that homepage to create content that converts? Okay, that's that's a great question. So again, I'm going to answer it from the B2B SaaS perspective. Um, for me, the most important thing to have on the homepage is then um, the message that I have on the homepage is resonating with my target audience. And also the message that I have on the homepage is the same with the messages that I'm giving on the social media and on my content or anywhere else. Because I don't, I don't want to have a conflict. Okay. So if you read my, let's say that my customer reads my um, article on LinkedIn and they come to my website because they think that I'm the best KPI dashboard software for small business. And then within my, in, in my homepage, I'm saying I am the best KPI dashboard software for enterprise. Then they're going to be like, you know, well, I think, I think I'm confused. Like this is not the company that I was looking for. So you got to make sure that you're nailing the value proposition that people should be able to understand by looking at your website for five seconds, that they can understand what's in it for them. I think that's the crucial thing with the B2B SaaS. Right. Okay. And so I was, I was actually looking while you're talking about that, um, at our SaaS platform landing page, um, which I've now put up on screen. Manage your brand message on Google search results with Kali Q Pro principal use cases, improving your damaged brand SERP, optimizing your brand SERP to prevent leakage of bottom of funnel prospects, trigger and manage all kind of knowledge panels for brands, people, podcasts, products. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So here, Kali Q Pro SaaS is the main header, right? Yeah, it's the, it's the SaaS pro platform that we offer to agencies. Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put that there. Like, because oh, yeah. like. That, that's the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first thing that gets my attention, right? Calico Pro SAT. Um, I think you're assuming that when the only way that I can put this is like, I assume that I, I know that hundred percent of my homepage visitors, they know exactly what I'm doing and, and like, they're just here to make, make a transaction. I don't know right. if that is possible. It might, it might be difficult. So for those people who are not super sure of, of what you're doing, it's always better to state the value proposition there. You're actually doing it. Manage your brand message on Google search result with Calico Pro. That's a better um, H1 than what you have. Okay. Well, in fact, a better H1 than that would be own page one of Google for your name. Exactly. Yeah. Because then you're, you're stating the value. There. Then I'll understand, okay, wow. Like, okay, how they're doing it, right? Then I will scroll down and then I will want to see like some, some testimonials there, some, some logos. Then I'll get more excited. Then I'll scroll down and I'll be like, okay, well, they have a great value proposition, but I want to 
visualize this process. How is this going to work for me? Right? Because mm. the first usage of a product is going to start inside my brain. So I need to be able to see how you're delivering that value proposition. Here's how we're doing it. Step one, you do this. Step two, step three, step four. I would want to see that as well. Right. Oh, I'm going to have to listen back to this last part because I now need to rebuild that page. <laughs> uh, own page one of Google for your name and demonstrate or build, or, or build your authority. The thing is, or is that own, too much? No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say much to me actually. Like, what happens when I own the number one search result for my name? Like, do I get more clients? Do I look more authoritative? Like, do I look more credible? I would right. put that. Right. So, oh, but your authority within your niche is demonstrated by owning page one of the Google search result for your name. Yeah. So, but. People, people are not interested with uh, being a number one searcher. They're interested with what they will get if they can run right. number one. So I think that would be a better message because then I'll be like, oh, wow, like, I will look more credible. I can get more customers. Interesting. And how do they do it? By owning the number one search results in my name. Okay, that's an interesting method. Let me see what, what this is. Then you, then you well, can get. Yeah, okay. So what we can now conclude is CaliCube has, has been around for eight years now. Uh, we just had our eighth birthday a few weeks ago. We've been doing it all wrong for eight years. Thank you, John, for telling me how to do it right. I'll get down to that and change it all later on today. Thank you, everyone, for watching. That was absolutely... Jason, before you cut me off, I got two more tips, actually. I got two more tips coming in. Um, so let's, let's start with the first one. Then the other tip that I want to give for, especially for people in B2B SaaS, is what I call a content focused on the current solution, right? So... For this, again, you need to do your customer interview and then you need to understand how people were solving their problem before they used a tool like yours, right? Mm -hmm. So when I say alternative, alternative doesn't mean that there's one of your competitors, especially if you're in B2B SaaS, you're mostly competing with the Google Sheets. People are still using Google Sheets pretty much everything they do. So for this example, let's say that you're a SaaS company that is helping people to build the content calendars, okay? And you mm -hmm. did your homework and you did your customer research, you know that let's say 70% of your customers used Google Sheets, created content calendars before trying one of your competitors or you. So in that case, um, you go and write a content on how to create a content calendar on Google Sheets, right? Because that's right. what people are using to get the things done. And then within that content, the structure is like this. You give people what they want, right? You give people on five or, or 10 steps, how they could create a content calendar on sheets. Mm -hmm. And then again, we're using the drawbacks. What are the drawbacks of, of this method? Then we refer back to our customer interviews. The drawbacks are crucial here. The reason being is that if you guess, if you just guess the drawbacks there, you'll lose the people. They'll feel that it's for the content is written for SEO. So you need to take the drawbacks from your customer interviews because your audience will resonate. They will say, aha, uh -huh, this yeah, they get me. They get me. This is exactly the problem that, mm. that I'm having with this. And then you present a better solution there. Like, here's how you can create a content calendar in five seconds with my tool. And then you show people how they can do it. Um, like, I use this quite often and it works, right? Because not everyone is searching for a solution like yours. They're just trying to get a problem done. So the current right. solution focused content is great for them. Okay, perfect. So alternative two, not necessarily a competitor, and a solution to a problem that people are actually trying to solve with the wrong tool, as it were. Yes. Okay. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be a Google Sheet. Maybe they hire someone to do it, right? Whatever it is, you write a content on how to do it, how to do it with an alternative solution, and you present your product mm, there. That would be great so, for knowledge panels because people have all sorts of ways to do it. And how, yeah. So, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, no. Then there's lots of ways not to do it. Uh, and most of the ways people are doing it these days are spammy and we're moving into the world of knowledge panel spam and what we're offering is saying, rather than do it that way, do it properly because a knowledge panel is for life, like a dog or a cat. Exactly, exactly. Um, and the other tip that I wanted to give is, um, so we we're talking about doing a product-led content marketing, right? So whenever it, whenever it makes sense, you use the pro tip. Right? You, you create a box and you highlight it with a different color so that it gets the attention. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find opportunities right th like this, I usually like to use control F. Anything that mentions, you know, drive, decrease, any directional movements, 
I, w- I would go and find if you're talking about how to increase your revenue, right? Or how to increase your churn. If this is related to your product, then you can put a pro tip there because you'll see that most of the time is when people say, oh, this is how it increases revenue. This is how it decreases churn. It's just too shallow. People don't mm. go in depth to explain how this could work for them. So control F and search anything related to, you know, increase, decrease, or mm-hmm. any other directional keywords. And then C, like, let's say that again, you're doing a sauce churn. If you're talking about how to decrease the churn, then that, and you found it in the article, there's a great place where you can put a pro tip and say, hey, by the way, we're talking about uh, decreased churn. Here's how we can do it. Go in, step by step, go in depth and show people how, how it's done. Hmm. Okay, brilliant. So that was content that converts and thank you so much. I'll splice this in to the rest of it later on. The first time on Cali Cube Tuesdays, we've recorded in two parts because I forgot to ask you the two questions <laughs> you wanted. Thank you everyone for watching. That was absolutely delightful. Thank you, John, for being here. We're going to pass the button on uh, to Jock Ramsey, who's going to be talking about Clear brand marketing flywheel. The marketing flywheel, I'm really interested. Once we can get people or get the system going, how do we turn it into a flywheel that will be self-sustaining? Could you pass the baton, John? I am passing the baton to Josh, and uh, it sounds it sounds very exciting. The marketing flywheels, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you next week on Cutty Cube Tuesdays or on Branded Search and Beyond with Jason. Thank Thank you. See you soon. CaliCube. It's all about your brand, Serp.